in one big ball of stuff. And there's me going, ah. trying to rip it apart. Right, Coach Helen for UFIT Studio. Right, let's rock and roll. Now, <laughs> how to live guilt free. Okay, so somebody think, oh, it's along the same lines the last few days. Kind of and kind of not, right? So, um, how to live guilt free. Now, there are, so this is not just aimed at these people. There, are, there is actually a large portion of people at the minute yes doing a uh, drop one size challenge with us online and also because this is like a nice rounded four week period of time we've got quite a few people kind of doing a um their own kind of little challenge maybe basically for, for this these few weeks right because it's nice nice contained period of time runs nice into december and so why not uh run a little bit of, of summit summit right so running a little bit of summit summit to keep them running for the next three or four weeks now uh, what does that tend to to bring out with people? It tends to bring out that kind of mentality where it's all or nothing, right? Which is okay to some degree for a period of time. Um, but then there's there's sometimes it be a little uh, of a crossover, right? In terms of behaviours when it comes to guilt and eating off plan, right? So I taught the other day... Uh, I talked about, if I remember, I talked about coffee breaks, right? I talked about coffee breaks versus where people use the word binge or if they, they ruin their diet, right? Where I was talking about how uh, perceptually somebody won't see um, see the cup of coffee and the, the biscuit and the muffin as breaking away from uh, their diet or ruining the diet or binging. And yet if they sat in at three or four chocolate bars, they would see that as binging and create guilt around it even though calorifically there's more calories to have the coffee and the muffin, for example, which is like 700 calories, wasn't it? Something like that. Uh, so it's a hell of a lot more calories than actually just having the chocolate and not, not calling it what it was, right? So um, often when it comes to guilt and food, what we tend to focus on is the one big event, right? And not the rest of the diet that's going on, right? So we focus on the one thing and that's where Sometimes the language that we use when we're talking about eating away from our normal standard, that's where we create some of the guilt. So whilst it's, yes, it's about calories, yeah, it's also about how you describe it and what language you use to yourself. Now, the things I hear <laughs> would be, uh, binge is a big one. I binged on, on chocolate, I binged on biscuits, um i've wrecked i did so well and then i ruined it that's usually a common state i ruined it i wrecked it um i <laughs> i used another word but i fudged it i ate fudge and fudged it i ate a lot of fudge and fudged it a lot i uh, hey, being polite here it's not like me is it i'm not using swear words Ooh, who'd have thunk it who'd have thunk it however um it's the language of which you use around it sometimes um, that highlights that singular event, right? So we then attach, some people attach, a level of guilt around it. And your words that you tell yourself when you are eating away from your average week is where the guilt comes from or where you create the guilt. Okay, so I'm not suggesting that it's not being aware. So you're obviously going to be aware if you're eating excessive calories away from the standard. But it's also about understanding the words you're using to yourself and how you're, um, what's the word, how's the terminology? I would say how someone is telling themselves off for it. So you've got to appreciate that, you, yes, you've got to accept you've done it. You've got your own, you've done it. I'm not saying to ignore it either. But also, if you berate yourself over and over and yet you're still not aware of the bigger picture of your diet or of what you're eating, it kind of, it just is, becomes counterproductive. Now, why, going back to the beginning, why, um, why now? Why bring this in as a life or why adapt this to the current situation? Because, because of that, that mentality of, of three or four weeks, I'm going to be really good this time. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be really healthy this lockdown. I'm going to exercise regularly and be different with my food yes i've got this and then inevitably i mean diwali is uh, diwali is upon us to start with uh, if it wasn't diwali i do genuinely be, believe this weekend would be the weekend because it's it's like enough in right it's halfway through so do i think this would have happened if it was diwali or not anyway yes 
am I hearing a lot from clients this week saying, I've ate a lot of sweets, I love a lot of treats, and I've made a lot of biscuits, but I've also ate a lot of biscuits. I've ruined it, I've wrecked what I was going to do over these few weeks. Yes, I have. But what is common amongst all of those clients, all the people that say this sort of thing, is that the fact that they have actually told themselves off a hell of a lot more than I even breathed in to say anything, right? So they've actually already uh, put themselves, they've built the singular event or the singular couple of biscuits into a phenomenal destruction of their whole health and fitness journey through simply berating themselves repeatedly uh, back and forward, back and forward. It's not the singular moment that's the issue, really. Unless the moment goes on for like a series of hours and weeks. It's what else is happening. The context of your entire week, your entire day, your entire diet. It's a context of that. But sometimes I, I know, well not sometimes, I know majority of people miss that. They miss perspective when it comes to a singular event. In that moment, hands down, and we've probably all done it, in that moment, we will forget about the other, <laughs> oh no, I was about to try and do maths, the other so many hours of the day, or oh, all week, even worse, where, where <laughs> I've got a calculator or someone, wait, I'm sure I have, look, I'll just do quick maths, so many hours of the day, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> says everything about me and my mess. However, there's so many hours of the weeks and, and th that we've actually been okay with our food, the better than okay, we've been great, we've made great choices, we've been healthy, we've been very good with exercise. If we take the one moment and mushroom cloud it into a huge layer of guilt, that is what we're going to carry with us forward for the rest of the day and, and, and through the rest of the week. In reality, it's it's all about the balance, right? A one-off isn't going to wreck your balance, okay? Now, going back to energy balance, do I think that everyone has their own individual balance that allows them to either maintain weight, lose weight, or gain weight? Yes. It's only when it becomes a massive imbalance to the rest of your week that there really is an issue. Think about it. If you have one night of the week where you have some Ben & Jerry's, and maybe a little bit more than Ben & Jerry's you plan to, if it's Kate, it's the tub, right? No, hands on, it'd be me too. Kate, tub, halo, tub, right? It's the tub, right? If someone has the tub, is that, is that okay? Well, yes. <laughs> okay, so this, yes. The thumb's going, okay, it's going, yes, 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 yes. Is that okay? Yes, right? <laughs> I wish Leda was on issue, but like this, ah! emoji. Yes, it's okay to eat that if, right, if you know it's not imbalancing the whole of your week. If you know you've balanced the rest of your meals, the rest of your week, your rest of your probably entire day, if you're going to do that, towards that moment, does that need to then attach guilt afterwards? No. It's only if it becomes an imbalance. An imbalance would be, I'm having, um, for a, from, from a coach perspective, an imbalance would be, the most I've seen is, is 20 splurges in a week. Okay. That's the most I've seen ever from a client, 20. Now, what in the context of, of a special or a treat would be, I don't know, uh, or it was like a magnum. I'm just saying to had 20 magnums in a week, that's a lot. The, the, that contextually, it was like a magnum or a chocolate bar or um, a large packet of crisps or, or, or. So that would be, for me as a coach, that would be a huge imbalance. Now, I'm not also saying that anything under that is okay for their client was that a huge imbalance towards their goals yes it was would one magnum be an imbalance no if they are really looking after the rest of the week would two be an imbalance mm, maybe getting there right well in general right but the idea is is that once you find your own balance you don't have to worry about the occasion or attach guilt to the occasion there is no need to tell yourself off you can actually reassure yourself more other than not, that actually you're making a wise decision and a good decision against the rest of your diet or the rest of your week if you've ensured there is an imbalance towards something else. Now, yesterday I said, like, I had a lot of crits. I said at the end of the, yesterday's live, I was like, you can literally have your cake and eat it and lose weight. Now, this is kind of like, yeah, not planned, but it's kind of a follow on from that at the end of the day. If you find with your coach the 
perfect balance between ex exercising regularly, right? Eating food that helps your body have energy, right? Feel good. Do stuff that you need to do in life, like day to day life, right? Find ways to keep that, sustain that, make that better, do more through choosing great foods, right? And exercising regularly, yeah, to recap. And enjoying life. And if enjoying life means having some ice cream and still being able to do all the things that you could not do before you started your health journey, regardless of numbers or weight or weight loss or weight gain or any of that, put that to one side. If you're able to, uh, <laughs> quoting someone else, to, to move better, if you're able to move better in life and do all the functional things that you need to do, does that then mean that one moment of eating more biscuits than something else means that you attach, have to attach guilt and need to attach guilt and tell yourself off and use, I shouldn't have done that, all the language, right? The shoulda, coulda, woulda on yourself. Is that actually necessary for you to gain your goals and lose weight? No. No. Oh, by the way, <laughs> I, I only got one couple of messages yesterday after this is mine. But what's interesting is that I saw somebody else, another coach actually online today who had the same challenges because she had made a statement about paleo and then got a hell of a lot of <laughs> she literally just went mad. I think I was quite restrained yesterday after watching her uh, her Instagram. She done lost her mind. <laughs> very respectable coach, by the way. She's very good. But my God, she 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 went to town on the, on the, on the payload. <laughs> I f I felt I managed it quite well in hindsight. I could have said far worse, and she did. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it again later, just just to go. Oh, not alone. I can hear angry typing from the payloads in the background. <laughs> right. So I'm gonna recap. Okay. So. Just take it, if you are doing something for four weeks or you're on a challenge or you're creating your own challenge, it's important to know that it's not, again, about attaching guilt to a moment. It's not about um, seeing that, that one small event or one, however you want to phrase it, one small drop of water in the massive ocean of your, your day and your week, one moment where you actually enjoy uh, food that's, I don't want to use the word, naughty, or the rest of it, right, if we enjoy carbs, all the carbs, is that one moment, does it deserve and need to have a huge amount of guilt attached to it, especially if you're on a, a, a specific few week journey at the moment? No, it doesn't. Uh, just sidebar on that though, I would say, the one thing that also helps, right, if someone's watching and listens after just saying, well, how do you, how do you manage it? Firstly, always, always, rule number one, people, how to avoid guilt when you're eating in that, or you want to eat away from your 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 standard for the rest of the week, is plan it, plan it, plan it, not plan it in the sky. Plan the thing you're going to eat, okay? Plan the thing you're going to eat. Plan the thing that you want by, uh, why plan it? It's very psychologically so, impactful i can't even begin if you don't plan your your things you're going to eat you never enjoy them as much as you think you're going to to plan is to look forward to something does that m drive some people and motivate people the rest of the time if they know they're really going to enjoy it i always use this analogy and if you work in the office you'll get this if you don't work in the office you might not get this if you work in the office you're like god oh, i know this one it's the um it's the situation and i've worked in the office for a while probably the worst thing to go but stay with me uh if it's someone's birthday in a workplace we'll say that it's someone's birthday in a workplace and it's that one person that brings in those flapjacks right <laughs> it's the small square ones from a supermarket we'll say and they're probably going to go out of date yesterday <laughs> and I, you, you you know by looking at them they're going to taste like dust right you know you, that is just the thing is it's there it's, it's been there for three hours if it's in a workplace looking at you going hit me even though you know it's not going to taste nice and what happens you eat it like I've worked in an office I've had stuff talked to me all day <laughs> from some somebody's birthday food banquet oh buffet <laughs> but that many buffets in places of work or fuddles as they're called now Friday huddles 
that people bring food to. Same thing, right? It's always that one person who brings those shoddy flapjacks because they're two for a pound and taste like it too. What do we do though? We eat them mindlessly because they're there. And then what happens afterwards? Like you speak to any client afterwards, they feel guilt. They attach guilt to the moment. And why? Because it's mindless, right? This is an important thing to remember about eating like this. I mean, saying it's okay to eat like this if it's in balance for the rest of your week. But also, if you're going to enjoy what you're having, there ain't nothing worse when you feel guilty about eating some dusty ass flapjacks that are a day out of date. They're probably someone's just picked the yellow label off when they brought it in. Just, everyone knows that one person, right? That one person exists in every workplace. Probably was me, so own it. <laughs> me, that's me. Oh, I'm talking about it because I know it's me. <laughs> it's me who brought them in. However, um, to not attach guilt and not regret something is to actually appreciate and dial into the moment, actually um, be in the moment, as in I'm physically enjoying this food right now because actually I was really looking forward to it. I really, really do genuinely love eating this thing, whatever it is, and I didn't waste it on a dusty flapjack. Does that have as much guilt for people? No, because they were engaged in the moment and they enjoyed it and they go, do you know what? That was great, all right? When you jump down some nasty ass flapjacks all day, not as good, <laughs> And that's the thing, if you, if you know that you're eating stuff mindlessly, that's when it turns the language into binge. When you're not mindful of what you're eating, that's when the word binge comes in, because you're not engaging anymore. You're not aware of what you're doing. To some degree, there is, a, there is an unconscious eating thing going on. Um, and that's where the language, again, to repeat, comes back to, like, I've ruined my diet, I've wrecked it, um, I've fudged it, right? It's the one big event that we get into that we attach a lot of guilt to. Um, again, I'm, again, mindful is a, a perfect word for it, right? Mindful, being mindful of how you're eating as well as what you're eating means that your outcome as in how you emotionally feel afterwards will be impacted whether you feel guilty or not those are huge deciding factors so how you eat right how you eat and, and what you're choosing in the moment to go for the two deciding factors of the emotion afterwards um yeah so know that it's about the imbalance so if the imbalance is there right if you're really going to in the, the 20 times a week that is a, officially an imbalance right but we all have our own balance and imbalance based on how active we are based on how great our choices are during the week we, they all give us a, a balance or imbalance based on what we're choosing to have when we're eating away from our standards so uh, that also impacts how you're going to feel so know your own balance right Ta -da! now okay i hope you're sitting down <laughs> next live is on monday monday next live is monday uh so join me back monday at five o'clock if you haven't had enough of me and some people have not if you haven't had enough of me i am doing a seminar free seminar on uh stress this evening at 7 15 uh the zoom link is on the ufit uh studio page if you've got nothing else on please join me while i present all about stress okay so please join me for all things stressful it's all right kate it's all right <laughs> i'll still contact you tomorrow <laughs> all over the weekend you're still here from me you don't get to me that easily kate you just assume you're here on monday but in the meantime i will stalk you on the other part of your life <laughs> right for everybody else have a great evening and if you don't come to the seminar tonight you <laughs> will be sad um however i will catch you next week see you later